Okay, this is a kind of a mini tutorial slash quick tip. Um, but uh, I had a student send this to me that so they're um, just getting used to Cinema 4D and they've built this object. The real interest is not really like a full-blown 3D animation, but how to use a tool like this to do um, uh, other kind of things. And in this case, something that they would use in a, in a um, rapid prototyper. So um, this object looks fine, right? They've used very simple kind of cubes and put this together to create this interesting kind of grid structure. Um, but when he printed it the first time, um, there was a, a few weird things uh, that he noticed at these intersections. And, and the reason is because they're intersections. So at least when you have a, uh, the plastic extruding rapid prototype like a, a MakerBot, right? I don't actually know if this would happen with the, uh, the emulsion uh, prototypers. I don't think that would be the same way. But if you're dealing with something that extrudes plastic, um, the prototyper traces the outside boundary of the object, and then it puts kind of a, star, a sparse build in between there. The problem here, so if I just select this object, um, and let's just go up to select and say hide selected polygon, you can see that actually there are polygons inside uh, the other polygons, right? Because this cube went all the way across and it intersected with this one and that one, which, you know, from a rendering standpoint, is not that big a deal, right? If that's what you know what you need and that's the quickest way to do it, um, uh, no harm, no foul. But if you're doing the prototyper, it will go along and it will print um, those internal polygons, and so it just you know it will do it. But you just kind of get some a little bit of strangeness, right? So what we need is a watertight. Oh, let's just hide this other one for a second. Right. I'll put this down here. So what we need is a watertight version of this that has no internal um, polygons to it, right? We could, you know, spend some time like going along and deleting and stitching these all back together. Uh, that would be a, a big waste of time, I would say. So um, because it's the right shape, right? We just quickly need to export this in a format that the prototype machine would would be happy with. So um, the way we would do this probably in Cinema 4D. Uh, even though we're going to create a lot of polygons doing that, is to use the volume builder and, and the volume mesher, right? So I'm um, just going to create the volume builder and I'm going to put this object, uh, big side two, inside of this. And what you're going to see uh, is like, great, I have started to create my own little version of something for uh, Minecraft, right? <laughs> Um, so this is a voxelized uh, model, and first you're probably like, well, this is not going to be any help uh, whatsoever. So it takes the object and it does this ray marching algorithm and it, it uh, um, moves around the surface and it puts down these, um, it identifies these voxels, right? Just think of them as little primitive cubes um, uh, based on the surface detail of this thing, right? And uh, as the default, there is a uh, voxel range. I'm not going to get into all the, the stuff down here. Um, but you can just start turning this down, and you'll see, well, already at 5 centimeters, right? And that's how many, um, uh, how many voxels, how close together they are, as it creates that surface, so that it recreates that surface. So um, you want to do this kind of um, maybe little increments at a time to get what you need. In this case, I'm going to have to do something pretty small. And at some point, Cinema 4D is going to say, are you sure you want to go that small? Um, you might get some weirdness out of this. But, but in this case, I really do because I want this to be these edges to be as sharp as possible. So I'm going to try 0.5, right? And maybe even, and already this is going to get, see Cinema is going to say, are you sure this is going to take a little bit of time? But I'm not going to animate this, right? I'm just, I just want to spit out this object, right? So you can see right now if I go to the display and I have the grout shading with lines turned on, but the object itself, the, the builder, is not actually making a piece of geometry. It's making a voxel volume um, object itself, right? So in fact, maybe let's turn this back to two. So I'm going to leave it rough like this. It's really hard to tell how those edges are working, but um, when we use the volume builder, we're almost always, I would believe, use the volume measure afterwards. So um, I'm going to take the builder and put it inside the measure. And you can see now here is that surface and we get a much better uh, sense of um, how dense the polygons are and the fact that the edges are not that sharp, right? So let's make this, oops, let's 
make it one centimeter, right? That the uh, of the box, the the builder there, and you get a sense of how tight that is. It's still rounding a little bit in these corners, and it's rounding a little bit here. Um, so I'm just gonna go for broke on the uh, the builder and just say 0.5, right? And it's gonna be really dense, um, but still pretty tight. You know, I could leave this. Let's try that. If I went back to one, you could also experiment with um, the measure and what the threshold is for um, where those voxels are created, right? So 50% would be right in the middle. Uh, and it's pretty tight, so I'll go back to the builder again and let's uh Yeah, I'm okay with it going that dense, right? So that's a lot of uh, mesh in there, but we get reasonably tight uh, corners here. Um, and the nice thing is inside of it, I'm not, there are no um, interior polygons, right? The, the, the inside of this is all hollow and I have stuff on the outside. And obviously you're like, wow, that's a lot of polygons. So we can go to the mesher here and we can tell it to look at the surf surface and adaptively uh, subtract or add polygons as needed. So I'll just try, I don't know, 5%. And you can see I still have basically that same shape. It's relatively tight, right? And, but it's using a lot here on the edges, right, where I need them. So I did a good job of, of limiting that. So it's a relatively dense object, but again, I'm, I'm not animating. It's not a horrible number of polygons, and it's nice and clean, right? And if uh, and then, of course, at the end here, if uh, once I'm done with it, I'll just hit C, and it will give me an object uh, that's just down to its polygons. And to double check that, let's just go in here and select these polygons. And I'll go up to select and uh, hide those. You can see inside, right, there's no internal polygons. So when the prototyper goes around, it will just see this exterior surface um, from the voxelized uh, process and have a nice clean mesh, not mess, mesh, <laughs> nice clean mesh. Um, and it doesn't have any of that. So if you ever, you know, kind of just amassing objects, um, like kind of a Boolean sculpture, um, just gluing objects together. <coughs> Excuse me. The volume builder, uh, along with the volume measure, can help you um, set that up really, really quickly, right? So you could do the same for this one, but I'm, I won't. I won't demonstrate that exact same process. Okay. Volume builder and measure—they are your friend.